everyone. This is Bethany Nicole with the Hollywood Times, and I am here with the Rue Powell. She is an award-winning writer, child advocate, and founder of SOSA, which stands for Safe from Online Sex Abuse. You also might recognize her from her Discovery Plus show, Undercover Under Age, which is coming out with its new season. And in the show, her SOSA team works in tandem with law enforcement to apprehend child predators by becoming the targets themselves. It's a wild ride, and I would love for her to tell us a little more about it and answer the question that I know is on everyone's mind. Rue, what inspired you to do this? What created the nonprofit, the show, all of it? You know, when I was growing up, I think my parents were only worried about me maybe sneaking out at night or sneaking booze at prom, right? They weren't worried about <laughs> smartphones. And I feel like I am part of the first generation of parents that are raising kids with smartphones. And it's just uncharted territory. When we were younger, my parents were concerned about the people that were in close proximity to me. Or even the other side of that, predators really only had access to kids that were in close proximity to them. But now we have the internet, which is wonderful in a lot of ways, but it also gives people access to each other from all over the world, which means a kid can be abused and not even be in the same room as the abuser. That abuser can be five states away. So I think this idea of this really quiet online sex abuse that I think brings kids a lot of shame, um, and we don't know how to support that, or they're not sure what to say because um, they're embarrassed. You know, it's just another form of abuse, I think, that has really kind of spiked over the past 20 years. and. I really wanted to be able to do something about it. And so at the time I was in the tech space and I was seeing a lot of evidence of this and Sosa was born. That's amazing. Definitely a worthy cause. Um, so you're on your second season of the show. The first one was incredibly successful, several convictions, all of the good stuff. Um, so what can viewers expect from the second season? Season two is wild. Uh, it was wilder than we expected. We're in a different location. We're in Canadian County, Oklahoma, and a lot of these laws vary state to state. So some states have grooming statutes. Um, ages of consent can vary by state. And we're working with a team that already has, they already have like an established ICAC, Internet Crimes Against Children team. And it was really great to work with them because we end up using three different decoys. And we have these people that are ready to go uh, kind of at any moment's notice. And we end up having a lot of fast and furious arrests and takedowns. Um, and these perpetrators really range in, um, they're varied in level of criminality and how intense they are. We had one guy who was really slippery and uh, he was this man in his late thirties who was targeting a 12 year old decoy wow. and he wanted to pick her up and take her camping and showed up with a stuffed animal for her and you know he was arrested and you know we're standing there kind of staring in disbelief at this like stuffed koala on the dashboard that he brought for this 12 year old and it turns out he has a 12 year old of his own and it turns out he and his wife are also foster parents like these are the things that you're like this can only get worse i don't want you to say anything more because this just it just keeps getting worse and i guess we kind of assume that there are certain people that like you send your kids to school and you think oh these teachers um, are like second parents to my kids, right? They have their best interests at heart. Or you think about foster parents and how they're serving the community. And then you find out that some of these people are, are predators. They're sheep and wolves clothing. No, wolves in sheep's clothing. And I think that's really, really disheartening and really sad and, and frankly, really shocking. I mean, I've been doing this for a while and the even the law enforcement, they've been doing this for a while. And there were some cases that kind of made us go, you know, we were kind of stunned by just how egregious they were. And I, I guess like how low can things go and like the bar is in hell, right? Like it's just, it's just um, constantly finding something new to be horrified by. Absolutely. Yeah. I actually used to work for Child Protective Services. So yes, I just 
definitely relate to that. You're like, wow, how low can you go? And I think that's why your show, one of the many reasons, of course, that your show is so important because I think people just don't know. They just aren't aware. They don't know what to look for. And, and kind of, I think a sense of like, we don't want to look right. Like we don't want to know necessarily, but in order to protect our kids and all the kids, like we have to know, we have to be informed. And I think that's just another reason why your show is just amazing. And your cause is so great. Um, So it is a little hard, right? (laughs) I think a lot of the questions are, are, a lot of questions that we get are like, well, what's, what are the worst apps? Like it's Snapchat, right? It's TikTok. And I think, you know, when it comes to like not wanting to know, I, I hate telling parents, like it's no real app in particular. It's any app or platform where you can communicate with a child. And I was, um, doing a training session with a trust and safety team for, you know, an app and they're dealing with online predators they are dealing with predators reaching out to reaching out to kids and it's not snapchat and it's not tiktok it's actually just a coloring book app and you know especially when your kids are little you kind of hand them an ipad you're like this looks pretty innocuous here you go have fun but Mm -hmm. to realize that it's permeating every part of the internet or anything that we think is you know really benign um Mm -hmm. and it ends up being a place that's rife with perpetrators because it's a place that attracts children. Right. And that definitely leads, you know, into the next question that I'm sure a lot of our readers and viewers have, which is what can we do to protect our kids? What can the kids look out for? You know, what are some things that really, you know, the readers could take away and the viewers could take away from the show? I I wish I had, you know, a magic pill to sell every parent because it's, you know, this is um, obviously a question that we get a lot. And I think Mm -hmm. the answer is maybe a little bit dissatisfying. But it really has to do with having constant communication, like open conversations with your kids. So I have teenagers and just like I don't have the sex talk with them once, um, I have it with them multiple times. It's kind of an ongoing conversation. We do the same with online safety. And I also try really hard to be the kind of parent that doesn't react uh even when you want to like oh there's a broken window and you know you try not to have this knee-jerk reaction because they see how you respond to some sort of crisis or when they do something wrong and when it really counts because somebody's been preying on them when it really counts because someone's been abusing them uh you don't want your kids to be scared to come to you you know you don't want them to be scared to say hey something feels sketchy online with this person um and so i think really being able to say if something happens look it's not your fault like your it's abuse is never a victim's fault and these people are master manipulators preying on children if something happens come to me we'll work it out i'm here for you i think it's a really 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 important thing that like i love to drive home because i think that victim blaming is the one is one of the things that keeps perpetrators safe. You know, if 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 perpetrators are able to say, well, you can't tell your parents because they're going to think that you're a terrible for, person for doing X, Y, Z, we're, we're just keeping perpetrators safe when we blame victims. Absolutely. And I think even just watching your show, I got, you know, the chance to screen some of the new season. And I think even just watching the show is a great way maybe for parents or, you know, even older teens to get an idea of, the reality of kind of what's going on, because I feel like I'm fairly well informed. You know, I worked for CPS, like I do child advocacy. And even I was like learning things. I was like, wow, you know, you guys set up the decoy profile. And even within just a couple hours, you guys are getting influxes of these really aggressive messages. And I think, you know, even for parents just to see that and understand, like, these are the types of things that could be happening. These are the things to prepare your kids for. Um, And even, you know, some of those are much more aggressive, but we know that they're not all that way. Some of them are more of like the slow burn grooming behaviors. And you even talk about in um, one of the episodes, a male is about to send the decoy a picture of himself, and he's claiming to be much younger. Um, and he says something along the lines of like, oh yeah, I'm really well muscled or, or I hope you like muscles. I can't remember the phrasing, but, and you say, you know, this is grooming. This is him preparing her to see an older male than what he's claiming to be. And I was just like, wow, I didn't even catch that, but it makes so much sense. And so I feel like even moments like that in the show would be so educational for people. Yeah, I love when parents say that they watch the show with their kids, because I think it really is 
it gives them an opportunity to have these conversations. And I think there's entertainment value for kids as well. And so they, uh, I know that my, my, I, for a while I wasn't letting my kids watch it and, but their friends were, and mm -hmm. I do think it's, it's, um, I do think it's like a really good tool for having conversations. I also think I tell parents like, Hey, if your kid's on TikTok, download TikTok, see what it's like, you know, be on the apps that they're on just so you get an idea of, of what's happening, what the features are like. And so for me, you know, maybe I am uh, ruined, a job hazard, but I'm very, very careful about um, internet access for my kids. And so when they turned a certain age or when they got a smartphone, I didn't just toss it to them and say, you know, good luck and Godspeed. It was right. a slow burn. It was like, all right, first you can text, you know, your family. Okay. You've proven that this is okay, but let's do uh, friends. And now you can download Audible. And I think one of them, like their first social media app was Pinterest. And then, okay, now you guys can have TikTok, but it's restricted and mom is able to, you know, mess with the settings. And and thankfully part of the job is that I do know how to work settings and, and figure things out to make them safer. And so that's a lot of parents will say, hey, what do I do to make sure that my kid isn't served these really salacious videos on TikTok? I'm like, oh, well, well you know, let's let's walk through it together. But I think that's um, a really good thing for parents to do. Like a kid wants to download an app, great. Well, download it first, see what it's like. Start chit chatting see if you can uh, find anything. And if there's anything to be aware of, then you can talk to your kids about it. So. For example, with TikTok, my kids know that if they're served a video that they feel like is like maybe like too mature or the content is just not for them, they will click not interested. So it teaches the algorithm. But then they'll also say, hey, mom, I just wanted to show you like this video came up. I'm like, thank you for showing me. And, and, and that's it. And I really appreciate the relationship that I have with them in regards to this. Like, I'm not saying I'm doing parenting right, especially in like a myriad of other ways, but I feel like we're doing well in the, <laughs> on the social media front. Definitely. So is that kind of what advice you would have parents give their kids and what you give your kids of like, you know, if it makes you uncomfortable, that's kind of the red flag. And is there other things that you would say? I mean, I think one of the best things we can do is teach kids to trust their gut. Like if they're talking to someone online or if they get a message online and they've got that like, like, hmm, that doesn't feel right. Like something feels icky. Go with that feeling. Go with that feeling and raise your hand and, and you know, tell someone that you trust. Like I tell the girls like, just tell mom, we'll talk about it and we're, we'll be able to assess it. And I think, you know, really being able to um, teach kids to kind of trust that little feeling is, is important. Mm -hmm. I mean, Absolutely. you and I do it. I mean, when we're like, and we're, we're grown adults, but if we're walking down the street and we get like a, a weird feeling, then our guard's up and um, it's important to trust that instinct. Absolutely. Yeah. I love that. Um, and I feel like this show is really just applicable on so many levels, even for people like using dating apps, like it's just so good to have, you know, you give so many tips of like how to kind of spot these things. And um, you even go into one about, you know, the guy is saying he's much younger than he is. And you kind of talk about like, you know, the details he's providing, like they don't make sense. They don't add up. And it's like, that's such a good red flag for all of us, you know, especially teaching teens. Like if you feel like something's not making sense, like if he's saying he has a full-time job, but he's in high school, do you have a full-time job in high school? Like that doesn't make sense. Right. So I feel like that's teaching kids almost to think for themselves too. Or even like just cultural references to like, if they're, if like, if their favorite band is Nickelback, they're probably not 15. You, know? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> you just outed yourself, Sarah. Like now we know. <laughs> exactly. That's amazing. Well, that's amazing. Um, so for, our viewers and readers who maybe don't have kids and it's not affecting them in that way, but still are very interested in the cause and interested in getting involved. What are some things that they could do um, to kind of contribute or to kind of get involved? Yeah, I mean, that's a great question. And I think that, you know, um, I love that you asked that question because I really do think it's more about just like equipping kids to be or, or you know having these conversations with parents what i really hope undercover underage does is it inspires us as a society to protect our kids a little better because this is all new territory it's like the wild west and um i i think there are different ways one like talking to your communities or talking to schools seeing what kind of programs that they have available um i also you know on, on small levels i like to talk to um legislators about laws that help keep kids safe online you know does your state have a grooming statute like look it up what's your state's age of consent um 
I personally think that the age of consent all over the US should be 18. It's not, but you know, if that's like the arbitrary age where we say, you know, someone's an adult and can vote and can smoke a cigarette and serve our country, then maybe that should also be the age where they make decisions about whether or not they can be in a dating relationship with a 65 year old. So there, those are things too that you can, that you can um, just see in your area. Also, I think that like volunteering for a place like the crisis text line or rain um, that offers support after the fact is also great. I mean, so, so we have, kind of three legs. There's the prevention, intervention, and support. Everything that you see on Undercover Underage is intervention. And, and other places do support you know, better than, than we do. Um, so we really kind of lean into the inter intervention portion. But you know, are there ways to um, have good relationships, positive relationships with younger people in your town so you can be a trusted adult? Like, you want to coach a softball team? Do you want to be, um, you know, in the big brother, big sister program. What can you do kind of to, to serve your community and give, like every kid deserves to have an adult in their corner, like a, a trusted adult in their corner and better if it's two, better if it's three. And so if you can be a trusted adult for a kid, that kid's gonna feel a lot more secure as they get older. And I, I can't think of a better gift you can give someone. Yeah, that is great advice. And I'm sure our readers are gonna really relate to that. Um, so thank you so much, Rue, and we did just want to encourage everyone, you've got to check out her new show. It is a wild ride. Um, the new season premieres May 1st on Discovery Plus and ID, and it's Mondays at 9, 8 central. Um, so where else can they find you, Rue? Do you have websites? Do you have other places? Anything else that you want to share with our readers and viewers? Yeah, so Sosa and you know we're all we're on social. Um, we'll be live tweeting the episodes too. We're very we're very much online. You know we're you know based on uh, internet safety. So of course we all have we've got like a Sosa TikTok account and Instagram. Oh, that's another thing that I tell parents to do. If your kid's gonna have TikTok, make them follow the Sosa TikTok account because we share a lot of stuff that's like for kids on there in order to them. It, like red flags, right? Like hey, this is a red flag, and of course we have to do it in the style of TikTok. So trending sounds and we think we're at least a little fun. Um, <laughs> it, it, it shouldn't be like a punishment for your kid. That's what I'm trying right, to say. Right, right, yeah. That's but the goal. Um, so sit together on every social platform. So Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, so sit together. And I'm also uh, online under Rue underscore Powell. So Powell, but I, 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 I don't think there are a ton of Rue Powells out there. So if you type in the name, you know, I'm sure you'll find it. Absolutely. Great. Well, thank you so much for joining us. We've loved having you. Um, so you guys, yeah, check out all of her things, make sure to catch the new season. Um, and we will be seeing her around. Thank you so much, Bethany. Appreciate it. Lovely.